Listen, <laughs> cause is adding way too many components. I, it's too much going on. We always adding something, adding something. Can y'all subtract something? Can somebody's issue come to a head? Okay, and it looks like y'all were right about quiet in. I mean, cause I had forgot all about it. I'm excited for next episode so they can actually talk about it. girl Talisa Ray what's up how you doing Ray of Sunshines we are reviewing Claws season number three episode number five Zaddy was a rolling stone wherever he laid his hat was his home and when he died all he left was was alone okay and don't say Zaddy of course but you know Zaddy is a new thing child get that out of here anyway so when they open up the scene, we see Roller at Dez's house. And long story short, he wants to move up in there, help decorate, put some Versace, Versace, Versace curtains and shit everywhere. That shit looked tacky. You talking about class up the place. You want it to look like y'all be looking tacky with your shirt open. All you wear is Versace. That shit would be tacky, okay? Versace, Versace, Versace. Y'all can disagree with me if you want to, but I want you to do it down below in the comments, okay? I can't even see gold and black and shit everywhere. Even if it's the navy blue, what? Get get the fuck out of here, okay? It's it's too gaudy, too uh, too much, too loud. No, how she has her bedroom now is very elegant, right? Very upscale. I like it. I want to make my room like an adult's boudoir. Right now, it's not these kids keep coming in my room. Like it it it. I'm gonna get it together to watch. Um, I thought about Jimmy Pink when I saw that fantasy sequence of them rapping. First off, for me, it's a no. Like, why would you do that? Like, it's the 80s and she had, like, that salt and pepper hairstyle. Yeah, you get that kind of vibe. Listen, it's a no. It's a no. Claw, stop doing that dumb shit. Like, I'm sure, Jimmy Pink, are you happy with that sequence? That one was, like, out the fucking blue. That one did not match. It, it was not good. They could have kept it. Okay? <laughs> uh, but right now, Des is not having him move in. She's all like, no, we just were trying to kill each other two years ago. Like, you got me fucked up, nigga. Like, why would, you, why would I have you here? You know, I got issues with me and every man I've ever, ever loved have left me, starting with my father. And, uh, yeah, that will definitely cause some issues with men and trusting men in, in your lives, okay? Anybody who, anybody don't have their daddy, anybody who know what that's like, and, you know, y'all could let us know. Let somebody know down below in the comments. She don't have anything to do with the casino anymore, so when she comes in to the, um, salon, she tells the ladies... You know, we don't have anything to do with the salon anymore. I mean, with the casino anymore. But I'm going to make sure we still taken care of. Listen, so Eminem is still around. So something is going to have to happen with the casino um, outside of Dean and Polly. Something is going to have to happen. Like, why wouldn't they have made it so she scribbled her name or something? Like, it was incoherent, Ill Ill illegible. And when they die, she gets the place, right? Anyway. Uh, we find out that Quiet Ann and Arlene now live together. They move really fast and she made a joke like shit. Maybe Roller's a lesbian too because he picking out curtains and shit and wanting to move in. Child. So they bring up daddy issues again. She said that she had been keeping tabs on him and that he's an architect in the city. And they also talk about him being, her having daddy issues and really resolving those would help her move forward with Roller. And that... Um, she should go and reach out to him. They also promote Roller moving in. I don't. Y'all know I'm not Team Resna. Not yet. I need him to prove himself. Okay? I'm okay with them dating. But why is we living together? I'm okay with him dating. them dating. But I need to see that he really changed. I really need to see it. Y'all, I know y'all be coming for me. Y'all be like, I'm too hard on Roller. But baby, listen. Somebody gotta be. Y'all too easy on him. I'm waiting on him to revert. It might not be this season. It might be next season. Because he can't be good all the time. Virginia goes to the casino and tries to please with Dean, plead with Dean to come home. That he has been living at the casino. Like, you're never here. And he's all like, they have everything I need here. And really, you're, a path, you're pathologically needy. I was like, damn. Wow. What the fuck? 
you really pushing her away. And listen, I'm going to just go ahead and insert this here. That little snippet that we saw for next episode when EJ was holding on to Virginia's hand. Is that what we're doing now? I can't wait to see what that's about because I really believe Virginia don't know who that is. Uncle Daddy brings Brenda back. Um, he's attracted to her because she reminds him of his dead wife, Wanda. Now, remember last episode when she was sucking on Bryce's dick? Remember that? When she got caught doing that? I thought that her and Uncle Daddy would have gotten together then. Y'all could go wind it back, wind it back, and see that that's what I said. Because I felt like they would have needed to go together. Maybe the Claws writers are, are, are watching our reviews, like and still in some of our thoughts and ideas. Listen, pay me. I don't need a lot. Just pay me a little bit for that little thought and idea. I know you took that from me. I, I know you did. <laughs> Toby is upset about that whole situation. Like, I know you, I know you fucking lying. Wanda's gone. I'm the head bitch in charge. Toby is not to be played with. We already know that. Uncle Daddy knows it too. Toby will throw your motherfucking ass under the bus, Uncle Daddy. Uncle Daddy will throw Toby under the bus too. So uh, how is this going to play out? When she runs in the roller, she does not. Uh, he promotes her going to find her dad. Go talk to your dad. Uh, Polly is sneak sneaking to go see Joe and um, with the money extortion. And he really wants to see who Polly is. And she says some shit like, I don't feel as broken when I'm with you. Ooh, that's a, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. He says he's falling for her and gives her like a piece of jewelry. I think it was a necklace. I don't know because they on the table and on the on the desk and, and they getting hot and heavy. Well, Desna takes everyone's advice and she goes and finds Mr. Calvin Sims, her father. And he pretty much dismisses her ass. Like now is not the time. You can't bring this up on me. Don't spring this on me. It's not the time. Like this is what I'm talking about. They throwing more stuff in. Throwing more stuff. And I, at first I thought maybe Calvin was the professor. But he's not. He's not the professor. Who the fuck is the professor? I need to know who the professor is. When you see her get rejected, again, she's heartbroken. And that whole tongue thing she keeps doing. I hate it. I told y'all that last time. I still mean it because it's with everything. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, is it sexy? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. She needs to stop. Niecy Nash, stop that pull the tongue back in your mouth because I don't think that that's how you talk normally put it back in your mouth put it back in your mouth quick um she tries to reach Dean which is you know her twin brother she wants some solace he doesn't answer because he weird at the casino Melba is not happy with the relationship that Mac is building with Dean because Mac goes to give Dean some ivory mahjong tiles and she is not happy find you somebody else what, what about doing the, um, the school? The professor is not going to be happy about this. Like, what is the deal with you and Dean? When we get back in the shop, there we see appropriation in its finest, right? I, again, I'm going to say it every time they do it. Whenever they start talking about real life issues, I'm always for it. And her, you know, taking on an urban black girl's persona, being super extra, taking it over to the top, um over to the top over the top is annoying everybody in the shop even jen who's also a white girl who appropriates black culture okay now listen i'm gonna just say this uh black girls aren't the only ones that have ghetto vernacular okay stop doing that to us we're not the only ones that be like bitch no listen i know we've got all that personality and excitement but don't just don't don't do that to us we are also elegant right we also classy that's not what claus was saying i'm gonna pull up okay i'm gonna pull up i'm gonna pull up y'all ain't gotta say nothing i'm gonna pull up jen ended up snatching her ass out the shop and walking her out the shop like uh-uh these white people i can't stand it and then she was like oh wait i'm contributing to it too huh i, I laid my baby my baby hair down too Okay, I'm going to do better. And then they were like, you're invited to the cookout. But I really feel like somebody must have been saying something, you know, when they review shit on Twitter, like, you know, cultural appropriation. But when you grow, when you have an, a, another ethnicity and you grow up with black people or vice versa, you do pick up their uh, idiosyncrasies. You pick up their lingo, their body behavior, all of that, their body language, all of that. So I see where that came from. Well, baby, Virginia walks in the shop and straight up tails on Dean. Like, he's been at the casino for days on days on days. 
he's got a problem. Dean is addicted to gambling, okay? He has an addictive behavior, um, an addictive personality, but so did both of their parents, what we found out that Lola and Calvin both were junkies, okay? Both left them, okay? And um, we really need, I really wanted to know their story, so I am glad that they are introducing um, Calvin to, into the picture so that we learn more about Dean and Desna. And we know that both of their parents were junkies, left them, and then they were bounced around from foster home to foster home to foster home. We need Jen's story now. Do we have Jen's full story? We do not. We don't have Polly's full story either. We have pieces of it. We definitely don't have Virginia. So they still got work to do. So as Polly, you know, is sashaying her ass into the shop for work, Yolanda, the accountant, rolls up on her like, Ho, you fucking with my man. I'm feeling some kind of way. I know what's going on between you and him. I know y'all extorting uh, money from all these shops. And guess what? I'm going to tell Mac and Melba, and I'm going to tell Desna, unless you cut me in. I used to be his Coco something. I don't know what she said, but it hurt her feelings. Like She was like, so you're going to run me some money. you going to cut me in or I'm telling. We see Desna trying to get Dean at the casino. trying to, And she get manhandled kind of by that fine-ass security guard. Um, don't touch me, don't touch me. But Dean is like, I'm not leaving. No, no, Dean, she don't even get to Dean. Mac stops her. And it's like, you could try if you want to, but he's here. He knows, I know how he feels about you always controlling him. Matt likes Dean, has taken a liking to Dean a lot. Ooh, it's going to be too much. So, Calvin goes to visit Desna at the shop. And he said, when I seen you, I didn't think I would ever see you again. I panicked. I panicked. Uh, I thought about finding you 10, 20 years passed by. I thought about it, but I would never know what to say. She said, she kept saying, why? She was like, why are you here? And I thought he's here because you came to see him. And I know he dismissed you, but he also dismissed you in a manner that says, can we talk about this later? And I know it was heartbreaking, but you wanted him there. You wanted to have a conversation with him. So it's sort of a catch 22 kind of thing when it comes to Desna and her father. And he says, I really want to try. I don't know what to do or how to start. Can you meet me halfway? Okay, I, I liked it. Now, when Bryce quit because of Brenda, remember he quit because, you know, Jen ain't having it. You can't be around that bitch. We don't fool with her. So he had to quit. Well, she, she as in Brenda, said, I know the perfect person. She went and got Virginia, who was a natural at it, as everyone noticed, as a Reiki healer. And Bryce walked by, and Bryce is super fucking jealous because it is a natural ability for her. She now has a third eye. Uh, and I'm looking like, okay, Brenda gonna smash Clay and Toby is gonna be upset because Brenda ain't gonna go for this, uh, you get to have your boy toy too. Brenda ain't gonna go for it. What y'all think? She gonna go for it like Wanda did? What you think? Let me know down below in the comments. So, we see Polly go and see Joe. And she tells Joe about Yolanda now extorting her if we don't give her money. First off, did you fuck with her? Was that your girlfriend? Oh, it wasn't like that. Well... It must have been because she's all like, we need to give her some of our money or she's going to Mac and Melba and Desna. He was like, you could see it in his face though at that point. Like, oh, I thought to myself, right here in my note says, she dying. <laughs> I failed to mention that Desna sent Calvin over to the casino because uh, Dean is not fooling with her. And so they have these conversations that seem to be going well. You can see that that's his father as far as it relates to like his brains and the things that he likes. You know, the planning, the architect architectural uh, conversations. You can see that they have that in common. And you can also see that Mac is threatened by Calvin and wants Joe to find out who he is. And Dean loses the game because he couldn't concentrate for talking to Calvin. He loses it, goes off. I'm all like, oh yeah, that's that addictive behavior. That's that whole, you know, burst out in the, you know, anger, upset, tears, mad, angry, tear some shit up because I'm losing. When we see Calvin leave, we know he's calling Desna because there's an issue. Calvin comes back with Desna. And Desna tries to plead again with Dean about not being at the casino. However, Calvin interjects and says, you know, they start talking about the buildings that he used to draw and they say, you want to come to the Sarasota, you want to come to the Sarasota building, I can get us in there so you can have a private tour. And that's how they get him out. And so as I'm watching them interact, I'm all like, oh, the, the dad is brilliant too. 
um, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, right? He invites them to the dedication ceremony later and Desna says we need to think about it and Dean's like, I need to get back to the casino. I need to get back to the Mahjong tournament. Um, now, from this one little incident, you know, one visit with her father, feeling like, you know, she's in a better place. She, Desna, is like, I'm ready for us to move in together. I'm ready for you to, for us to give it a shot. You know, I, I want us to be together. I'm all like, oh, okay. So just one visit with your dad, that helps you understand what your issues are with men. I think it's a few more and some therapy. Get you some fucking help. Get you some, get you some fucking help. So you're not running into the arms of, a, of the next man that says that he loves you. Well, we see Mac go and bribe Calvin. Like, take this money and leave Dean alone. He's mine. And then kind of gives a little innuendo as if to say, you know, I'd kill you too. You know what I'm saying? Yank on his shirt. Little passive, little passive uh, threat. We see Polly, we see Polly get a text from Yolanda and she runs off, leaves her person that she's doing their nails and runs off, runs off to go handle Yolanda. Well, when she gets to Yolanda's house and it's all quiet and you know, there's music going, but there's no movement in the house and the door is open. I'm all like, oh, Jordan came and killed her. Jesus Christ. Now we knew this was going to happen, but, um, going in there and staging it like a, like a, like, um, a suicide having her hung up I didn't like that I didn't like that and um, it's probably you know I don't know if y'all know you know how pro-black I am <laughs> but it triggered me and I was a little upset that they would even have a noose and have her hanging up there so that's one thing I was not happy with they could have found another way like put her in the bathtub uh, like with the with the fucking um, hair dryer like she electrocuted herself or something but not hanging i don't i didn't i i was uneasy uncomfortable about that especially in the climate that we're in like i was like whoever wrote that they should have wrote that out who was there to help them write that out and i get they were trying it was trying to be staged like a suicide but people kill themselves other way he could have slit slit her wrist right the right way up and down not side to side it could have been a lot of things that they could have done other than hang her up in the noose. That I was unhappy with. We see Bryce take Jen over to Rock Bottom. I got the name right. Um, it's for like an intervention to get Brenda and Jen back together so that he can go back to being a counselor because he is really jealous of Virginia. And it doesn't work. For him, it's not working. She don't want to hear nothing about it. None of that. As soon as Virginia, Virginia pops up, and walks over there and Bryce is like she always sticking her nose and stuff and she instantly gets down to the bottom of it we I understand that this hurt brings back the very first time you were hurt and Jen talks about when she was in the second grade and liked the boy and they called her names and spit at her and laughed at her and it was very traumatic for her they end up making it Virginia and um Brenda in Virginia. Brenda and Jennifer end up making up and um she cries in her mother's arms and stuff so I'm glad that it wasn't like I was feeling like it was a cry for help when Brenda was out there talking to Jen last episode or the episode before last whichever one it was so I'm glad that that's not what happened. Now I think I missed this part so let me just say this really quickly they end up going to Calvin's, um, taking his invitation and going to the open ceremony. Um, I don't know how I missed all that. Like, I'm all like, where is these notes? Okay, so Calvin, when he didn't take the money, we see him in a coffee shop. And in the coffee shop, this woman accidentally knocks over her purse. He says, oh, she's, oh, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. So she says, let me, he says, as a gentleman would, let me help you. So she helps to put the stuff back in. And one of the books says something about masturbation. We saw her masturbating in her office, right? Making some little giggly sound when uh, Matt came back and told her that Calvin didn't take the bribe. So she was like, I'll take care of it. And that's exactly what she was doing. She drugged him, put some drugs in his coffee and went on about her business. Did her little and went on about her business, right? Um, so at the event, he was visibly high, sweating, agitated, confused, 
um, he was visibly high. And so, of course, but Dean was triggered. He couldn't handle it. And Virginia, Virginia Desna was upset. He threw up on her shoes. You know, it was a disappointment. After you didn't said that you were, you were clean, now you, you know, now you high and throwing up and shit. So then we shoot to Polly, who goes and she sees Joe. And she confronts him about Yolanda. And he says, I didn't kill Yolanda. And she said, well, what about Penelope? And then it gets quiet. And he, so he was like, so she was like, so what? When you get tired of me, you're just going to dispose of me? Is that what you're going to do? Is that how this is going to work? Like, once you get tired of something, you kill them, you get rid of them. And you can see she, she's a good actor. Okay? I love her as an actress. Um, so she... He's trying to reassure her. No, I wouldn't do you that way. I love you. I wouldn't do you that way. You're my poly bird or whatever the fuck he calls her. And she, like, stops him and goes out. And I'm all like, how that's going to end up? He's going to start stalking you. His ass is crazy. His ass is crazy. Y'all, do you agree? Let me know down below in the comments. When Dean leaves out because he's triggered, <laughs> Virginia tries to get him um, to go home to some caught up in the rapture. Was it you bring me joy? Whatever it was. It was one of them Anita Baker songs. She was ready to give him some because she hadn't had none in a long time her own self. Um, what about us? What about me, Harpo? Like, that's how she really feels. And he's all like, I want to go to the casino. Pull over and let me out. I'll get my own Uber to the casino. <laughs> he has a gambling addiction. So when we get to the shop, we see Quiet Ann in the bathroom with a positive test for pregnancy. Y'all was right. Quiet Ann is just as pregnant as she could be. Y'all said it. Y'all called it. I agreed with it, but somehow lost the train of thought about that with Eric when it came to Virginia. So, she's pregnant. What do you think? I think she's going to have a baby. Hands down, she's going to have a baby for her and Arlene to have a family and have a baby. She's going to be a stud pregnant. That's going to be hilarious to me. Um, I'm sure it happens. It's not going to be the first time that it happens, but it's hilarious to me. Um, is she going to still be wearing, like, her, her chola clothes? Like, how that's going to work out, somebody? Well, while she's in there and gets ready to come out, because you can hear Calvin in the outside. She's coming out the... Calvin's not there yet. Hold on. So she comes out the bathroom and she has this look on her face. And Desna says, what's wrong, what's wrong Quiet Ann? And she said, well, there is something wrong. And so before she can actually tell them that she's pregnant, Calvin walks in and it changes the dynamic of the conversation. And he begins to try to plead like, no, it's not what you think you said. You wasn't doing that no more. You know, that whole back and forth. And he then tells her what happened. First with Dean and Matt trying to bribe him. And then she's all like, well, that ain't got nothing to do with you being a junkie. He was like, I didn't do anything. Somebody must have slipped me something. And then he replays what happened. And they put two, to two, two and two together, the oxygen mask. It was Melba who drugged him. So he wants to know, and she, because she instantly goes, I never wanted to get you in, involved in this mess. And he was like, what kind of mess are you involved in? Like, she didn't even have to say that. <laughs> Um, but we see her go home to her apartment. When she gets home, she calls Dean. Dean still is not answering. I told you that he's not a good person. I told you Eminem are not, they're not good people. They tried to kill me. They just drugged Calvin. You know, call me back, Dean. At this point, she is upset, okay? Um, oh no, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. She actually talks to Dean on the phone. So she gets back to the apartment. She calls Dean and she explains to Dean what happened. That Calvin had something slipped and it was uh, Eminem that had done it. They're behind it. You can't trust them. And Dean says something like, who are you going to believe? Some an ex junkie? I mean that. I mean, that's an, that is an honest reaction that someone would have if you were on drugs and then you got high by accident or whatever. That would be your response. Like, people be like, once a drug hit, always a drug hit. I don't think that's true. I think deliverance is possible for everybody. But that is a thought that people have. He then went on to say that Mac has been a better father th to me than Calvin ever was. That sends Desna on a tizzy. Upset, goes to get her nine, honey. Pops that clip in. 
yanks it back like she finna go do something. So that ends up concluding episode number five, Zaddy was a Rolling Stone. So y'all, tell me how this is going to go. Do you think that Quiet is going to tell her girls before she tells Arlene about being pregnant? I want to know how that plays out. Um, how about the Bryce and Virginia dynamic? Bryce seems to really be hating on Virginia, so are they going to just be working side by side? Because, of course, Virginia has a natural gift. I know I want to ask y'all about Roller and Desna living together, but it seems like things are working out for them in this episode. So I'm sure y'all going to say it's going to stay that way, but whatever. Um, Eminem and Dean. Calvin, Dean, and Desna. All these relationships. How are you thinking they're going to fare out? I know I'm excited about what's coming in the next couple episodes. They got a lot of shit plus the kitchen sink, but I'm still excited. I'm going to still review them. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Claws. Listen, if it's your first time visiting my channel, go ahead and click the red subscribe button. Become a ray of sunshine. You should click that notification bell so you won't miss another Claws review I upload. And for me, because you like me and I'll know it's real, give me a thumbs up. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next video.